Hey, um, welcome to the Overseer pamphlet. My name is Rob, and I'm the host of this one-man show. Welcome back to um, a new episode. This is an emergency episode because uh, stuff has been happening. Stuff has been happening in the world of K-pop specifically. There's gonna be another uh, one of those like K-pop drama episodes, and I've just been like you know very um, very much tuned in with what's been going on specifically with new jeans and um you know their endless basically mistreatment and how they've been caught into like this crazy like corporate feud basically um if you haven't got I haven't got any clue about like what's going on um I did have a couple of episodes about this. I think specifically there is one that I made about the new jeans and hype drama. But um, yeah, uh, new stuff came up recently, very recently. Uh, stuff has been, you know, getting out of hand again, and it just seems like it keeps on, you know, coming back as a roller coaster. Like we have low points, and then we have like you know silent points, and then we start all over again. So. Um, yeah, so let me just give y'all just a couple of songs of the week just before we get into actual uh, topic. But um, the new Dochi album is out. Dochi, incredible artist. Uh, she reminds me so much of um, Doja Cat in this album. Like it seems very much uh, a sister album to Scarlet, for example. Uh, so many of the songs of like uh, of a similar R and B hip hop uh, vibe in that sense and I already put one like in my previous episode one song but I think I have another one which is called Beverly Hills and that's a bit of a slave of a song another um R&B and Jason hip hop hip hop song in that sense I think um very cool stuff I'm gonna try and be like as brief as I can because I wanna I want to keep this like episode short and sweet it's not gonna be like a 40 minute episode, episode as usual so let's just try and keep it nice and sweet the next one is uh killing time by magdalena bay i don't, didn't know anything about this until i saw the needle drop episode uh anthony fantano's episode on the album that they put up um they put out uh and called imaginal disc but killing time is a very very fun track um it's a very avant-garde pop, I would say. Like this one specifically is more um, like guitar heavy in that sense, like electric guitar heavy, but um, very poppy still. Very, but very interesting in terms of vocals. Um, the kill, uh, like killer point, I guess, of of the song is just, I think, a mash of like the production. Like they they build this like atmospheric sound with all the tracks on this uh, album. By the way, it's like a. Um, meshed up album i don't know how to call it like every track goes into each other so it's a full experience it's almost an hour long but it's a duo uh, of a producer and a singer so just very avant-garde stuff very cool listen to the whole album but killing time is my favorite track on the album so fucking cool um i just love the chorus when it, like it builds so perfectly and it's just so well produced i cannot stress this enough so yeah be on the lookout for these people they're doing incredible things so yeah, then, bam, bam, bam. Oh, I forgot to mention this last episode, but Crazy by uh, the Seraphim is that bitch. Um, I didn't really talk about this song on the previous episode because I was still trying to understand. Um, well, I wanted to listen to the full episode, uh, to, uh, episode, sorry, the full EP, but I think Crazy is the highlight of the EP. Like, this song is so freaking good. It's house, it's. Um, slightly hyper pop as well but it's mostly house i would say it's like 100 percent house for sure and it's in that campy um sphere i love when sakura says like i am on otaku bestie girl she's japanese you know like that's like layers layers so cool and just the delivery of the girls is just incredible very like almost talk singing like rappy almost rap basically in their verses but then just like the the chorus and the like repetitive uh parts like all the girls are girling girling and all the girls are girling girling and all that stuff so that's iconic to me like that's 
campy that's so much fun production is 180 as usual so cool such a good departure i still think that this is not going to be enough for the um, korean public i guess for netizens to turn around and like you know have you know a change of heart for the seraphim um because as i said in my previous episode as well of cable drama i think they should have you know they should have um given the korean public something very vocal heavy in that sense or like at least prove something this song is very much not that like it's you know out of tuned vocals and all that stuff which i as i said like as a style like a self a basic choice in that sense i can get behind i love it if it's done right and in this case it's like so well fitting and i think the gays and the girls are gonna love it but um i'm not really sure about you know the korean public so gonna be looking at the um at the um, at the charts in korea but yeah unfortunately i i don't think it's gonna be hyper successful in that sense like it's not gonna bring them back to like you know number one spots and all this stuff but in my books this song is perfect so good so slave so yeah that's pretty much it i don't want to add anything else that's the vibe for now just three random songs. I know this is like a mid-week episode, so I don't want to, you know, get too much out because I need some songs for the next episode as well. So, yeah. Um, anyways, let's get into the actual topic. As I was saying, basically, if you don't know much about what's going on and if you are out of the loop with K-pop drama, it's been roughly five months since this whole corporate um, crossfire, I guess, this like internal civil war in Hybe has been going on. Hybe, as I said in my previous episode as well of K-pop drama, um, Hybe is a conglomerate of uh, labels, of smaller labels basically, uh, but it was very much born out of the success of Big Hit Entertainment, which is the label that owns BTS famously. So their CEO became the CEO of like Hype, which is this conglomerate of smaller other labels. So they started buying other labels and they still retain some of the inner CEO. Like they're still micromanaged in that sense, but they're a whole, like the whole thing has been, you know, brought under one big umbrella called Hype. Um, the thing is, Hype being the mother label in that sense has some like very, um, you know, very much influential decisions that they can make on these smaller labels so they give the budget and all that stuff and they can make changes in the like the lineup of each of the labels ceo and all that stuff and what happened like five months ago basically was that the ceo of um this label called adore which famously houses new jeans very popular group um uh, with the fourth generation um min Jin, the ceo um, went into a lawsuit, lawsuit with uh, Hybe because she was allegedly trying to um, retain major, you know, management and like creative control over cre creative ownership of the girl group and everything else. And there were rumors that they she started spreading uh, li like you know rumors around about other artists under the uh, label and. A lot of crap came out about false promises and all of that. But basically, all you need to know is ba that basically the CEO of this Adore label, sub-label of Hype, and the big guys in Hype are feuding over the management at um, Adore. Uh, and so there is much to be said about that. Um, a lot a lot has been going on. You can pick your own like side if you want. But I think what's ultimately very unfair um and again go listen to my previous episode to get the full context but i think what's very unfair is that the girls themselves like the new jeans girls are the ultimate um victims in this whole situation like realistically they they don't have any power over the management they don't they cannot like change what's going on they cannot have a say on this um and they've been basically getting like no they've been sabotaged almost like you know like all this drama and this like fighting has been terrible for the image um they are like their their releases have not been like you know super supported by you know promotions and all this stuff 
they've uh, avoided um, press conferences and interviews to avoid specifically getting asked about this like internal drama and just in general I think like people are so focused on like the drama itself that they no longer care about um, well so people are firing fireworks around me but anyways um, so yeah I think ultimately girls are like the ultimate victims here because um, they just have zero power over like any of these like management decisions and it's just sad to see like a girl that, a girl group that was so successful I'm not kidding like probably the most successful group of the fourth generation like they were dominating the charts in Korea like mm, every release was a bop every release was loved they were number one on multiple charts constantly so we're talking about like very promising group and it's just going to crap because of all these things. So why am I making this episode now? Basically, what happened very recently, um, and by very, very recently I mean, like, in the past, literally, couple of days, um, has been quite shocking and quite revealing again, and it really makes you uh, wonder how petty these people are, or, like, everything is just, you know, a petty game between the two managements uh, and you know it's just getting out of hand and I still want to stress how we should protect the artists first of all because they are at the end of the day also very young and they honestly are getting their dreams crushed by this whole thing so anyways I think that the starting point is that a f like last week I think last week um Hybe finally basically announced that Min Hee Jin, the previous CEO and creative director of New Jeans, was going to be removed as CEO officially and someone else was going to take a role and she was still going to be in the company uh, as a basically like, you know, a creator behind New Jeans basically, but she was no longer going to be the CEO, which was a huge blow for the Min Hee Jin cause in that sense because that's what all... Her main goal and how this whole thing started was for her to like get the proper, you know, creative rights and like the CEO role and basically ultimately gain more creative freedom over uh, new genes, right? To her credit, she is the she is the um, ideator, like the the main, like you know, the mastermind behind their concept, their music. Uh, music style and music musical direction and all that stuff. I think there's still a lot to be said about, you know, the um, agreements that went behind the scenes. We don't fully know any of them, but it seems that um, some sneaky practice, practices were going, uh, going, going on, like, under Min Hee Jin. She was trying to, like, separate her own label from Hybe. Um, and from, for some people, it, it felt like she was like she was just there to like steal resources from Hybe until she could get on her own two feet and just like get away from it. For, for other people, it feels like she, you know, felt oppressed under Hybe and she wanted her creative freedom. So there's a lot of different sides. I, I think ultimately, there's the two sides. You choose what you want to believe, and there's ultimately no truth. Well, there is one truth, but we will never, of course, exactly know it. I think. Um, Anyways, not the police, they're coming for me and Heejin, but anyways, I think basically what happened was when she got, like, you know, she got removed as CEO, she, Min Heejin, came out and said that um, this was a unilateral decision. She didn't have any say over this. She did not know about this until, like, you know, the press uh, released this, like, statement and all this stuff, and so basically this came as a shocker again, and it all went down into, like, a huge... Uh, you know dumpster fire basically <laughs> and people started you know raging online again back and forth saying that Min Hee Jin is just an attention seeker and other people are saying like she was mistreated so there's like a lot going on on X on Twitter at the moment as well and this kept on building up until something you know put the cherry on top I believe that sent everyone over the edge basically on the 2nd of September a previous, um, well, previous, now previous, basically, video director of New Jeans, 
Shin Woo Sok, who directed uh, music, music videos like Ditto, Oh My God, ETA. Um, he came, he went to Instagram and just basically outed some, you know, hidden inner workings between Hype, saying that he was forced to delete um, some content, some, you know, outtakes and some, like, behind the scenes of um, his work on some of these music videos, right? So, he put out, saying like, the statement saying that the, the, the Hype specifically forced him to do this, and that he um, was basically very distraught about this, of course, because um, it was his hard work, and, you know, it seems like a petty move, a media play move on Hype's side to just, you know, silence his voice and, like, make him pay for supporting Min Heejin, because he allegedly also signed a petition in favor of Min Heejin and all that stuff, and so he announced that he will refuse to work for the new management of Ador that was put in place now. That it is basically so loyal to Min Heejin and that it won't, uh, it won't, um, he won't work for the new the new label, basically, right? Uh, Hybe replied to this, saying that they did not force him to do anything, and that it was his own choice, and that they only asked him to remove content that could compromise the artists. But I looked at these videos when they were still up. I, I, I watched them, and they were basically, like, behind the scenes and, like, lower explanation and all that stuff. So I don't think there was anything very much, you know compromising about this, any of these videos. If anything, they should be looking at, like, Hub should be looking at how, I don't know, AI has been used to, like, you know, produce, like, straight-up pornography of their artists and all that stuff. Like, they should focus on, like, actual real issues instead of going for, you know, people who actually work under them. <laughs> I don't know. Very, very weird. But uh, either way, I think... He, I, I, on this, on this topic, I think rightfully so, I am, if this is true, of course, but, like, this is quite insane, in my opinion, like, it's such a petty move, such a, like, you know, payback time, basically, for someone who worked so hard on, like, some of their most, um, popular music videos, like, these videos amassed, like, 200 million views, or 100 million views each, like, insane stuff, you know what I mean, and now... Well, I mean, the videos are still up, but every behind the scene and every creative, you know, explanation provided by the actual director of these videos has been deleted. So, yeah. He also stated that previously, um, he also refused to work with other uh, labels, and sorry, with other sub-labels of hype, with other artists and all that stuff, because he was very much handpicked by Min Heejin to provide this, like, vibe, like, visual vibe for um, New Jeans, like, he was specifically chosen for this project only, and he was very happy to, like, you know, provide this, and he was very loyal to, like, this whole project, so, for that, like, artistic inte integrity in that sense, I can respect it. Hype, of course, did not like that, because they wanted to, like, you know, have this, like, splash effect on other groups as well, and reproduce the same, you know, success through the same director, right? But he refused to do that, so I think I can actually, like, believe this guy and think that, you know, they were not very happy about it, and they wanted to, like, have, have him pay back, but, again, this person is, like, you know, losing a lot of uh, a lot of money now, and he does say, he replied as well, again, to hype statement that he didn't do anything, like, he, he did say that it would be crazy for him to, uh, like, remove his videos out of a whim instead of being forced to do so, because what creator would do that? Like, I think that he was also getting money from these videos on YouTube, so I he has a point. Like, why would he re remove videos that he made and he became famous for um, just to, like, you know, for whatever? Like, he's uh, they're trying to, like, you know, he, he denounces uh, hype for trying to make a media play, making it seem like it's all a conspiracy for me and Heiji inside. It's just a mess. It's just a mess. But again, the girls... I'm so sorry for y'all, like, this is probably such a heavy, you know, blow as well, like, it's just, you know, at this point, like, imagine being under a label and being, you know, your own label is, like, so disrespectful towards your own art, like, doesn't really care about your own art, that 
and like I'm not really specifically st- talking only about hype, but both sides, I think they're just you know at this point caught up in this, this like huge mess, and they're just you know disrespecting the artists themselves and like you know all the hard work they put into this and you can see from the director and from the artists themselves like that they are just completely distraught and quite frankly like it's very disappointing to see this unfold like that so so yeah i totally understand like the girl side now to keep on talking about the girl side in that sense like the the members of the group side um they've actually come out recently i think yesterday and today as well to just to express their feelings and their you know complete uh emotionally stressed over the situation i think some of the members said that um well they use their own platform i think they have a social media platform um where they basically posted some you know some some notes basically on what they're feeling at the moment and this all seem to be taking the side of their previous ceo they're all they all talk about like you know mean he has um you know still a very crucial figure in their lives and um Danielle, for example, one of the members said, uh, since the CEO, Min Heejin, was dismissed, it has been very tough for her, and um, she had a lot on her mind, and it's a bit of a shock for her, and she's left feeling very anxious. Um, another member, Minji, um, through his app called, platform called Phoning, she said that um, she, it's been a week since like this change of CEO, and she wanted to like speak sooner, but she couldn't, and uh, she wanted to tell the the fans that you know that they that she's okay and all the members are okay uh but basically she's still very sorry for what's going on and she feels powerless for not being able to you know actually change anything so yeah another one was honey one other member who actually posted uh, a original song that she wrote it's a very you know cute ballad and you know, again, it's uh, she also shared a message comforting the the fans and the members and the CEO was the ex CEO as well. Um, you know, yeah, that's pretty sad, pretty sad. Um, yeah, so I think another thing that happened recently was their um, recent Soul Soul Fashion Week uh, red carpet moment. Uh, people were saying that they all looked quite sad on the carpet and one of them one of the members specifically Hyun was allegedly crying on the red carpet um you could tell the girls are going through it basically that's all i'm saying so and in the photos they all look very you know very well this looked amazing of course but they all looked uh pretty sad pretty down and yeah it definitely seems like there's a lot on uh, on their mind, but yeah. While they were walking out of the walking out of the carpet, one of the members was filmed actually crying. So she was moved mostly by the fans, but it, it, you can definitely feel that she's in a very fragile state at the moment. So yikes, yikes, yikes! Now, where do I think this is gonna go next? Um, I do believe that Hype will try all they can to you know, still make this group go ahead. They're gonna, you know, with a new CEO and all that stuff, they're gonna, you know, have other directors, of course, you're gonna have other producers and all that stuff, but they're still gonna, you know, try and go ahead with this group. But I think that, well, from what I've been seeing, and if the members are actually feeling this way, I think the members will be very uncooperative to what's going on. They will still try probably to like, you know, put up with it. But I think the vibe has generally shifted towards something that has been quite, um, you know, quite broken at this point. Like, it's impossible to repair this, I think. Um, unless, of course, they manage, like, I don't know, Mean Hijin manages to get out of, like, the label open a new label or something and bring the girls with her but i think contract wise is just quite uh difficult so but yeah i don't know i think as i said like 
they will try the hive will still try to like make them work under this new management and we will see new music eventually not super soon i think maybe later on this year towards the end or with a new year or something and if that goes ahead then I mean, we'll see how the people respond to that, but I think the people might even... Well, there, there's a lot of, like, you know, support from the fans, of course, and they're all... I think that the conversation I was going towards, like, uh, basically... Against, basically, the hype management overall, that they're still letting these things go, so, go on so publicly. Like, why are you not keeping these things under wraps and just, you know resolving this um through legal you know legal ways and like privately i don't understand why this has to be like such a huge phenomenon online and everything has to be so public i understand that being heat and started off this thing with like the press conference and all that stuff and he still went ahead and replied public as well but i think that people now are like just like hating on the whole situation and on hype and how fraudulent, you know, uh, how poorly, you know, they're treating their artists and how little they care about, you know, the artists themselves and they seem to care more about the money aspect of it all, which, I mean, what can you expl ex expect from a conglomerate who basically built a success on buying multiple labels? That's all I'm saying. Not hating on it specifically. Like, that's a very common practice in business. But, you know, it's a capitalistic you know, business in a sense, like it's built to earn money and to like amass success as any label would. But I think this instance specifically, it's extremely like revenue uh, oriented in that sense. So I think artist uh, artistic in integrity has been lost in this sense. And you can see from how this has been handled that it's just quite, quite disappointing, honestly. So yeah. I just wish for the girls for uh, to just, like, you know, probably even get out of there or, like, just get some peace of mind and, you know, recharge. And if they still feel like they can pursue their dreams to just, you know, either try and make their voices be heard. Definitely get a, your own lawyers, girls, and try to get out of the contract, in my opinion. Because <laughs> it's just crazy, crazy stuff. Um, yeah. We'll see what happens, but um, I am very, very distraught as well. I'm very, like, concerned, and I just feel bad that, you know, this whole thing went down like this, and I don't know. Quite hard, quite hard, but it's whatever, you know? Anyways, um, that's the whole point of the video. The video, what? <laughs> the, the episode, uh, but... I just wanted to like have this like little emergency episode because everyone is talking about it and I wanted to put my two cents on it and I think that tweeting about it, I didn't tweet about it of course because I think I had very complex thoughts about this and I, I'm still not sure whether I can take anyone's side. I just, again, I think my main point that I've repeated multiple times throughout this video is that I take the girl's side most of it all. Like... I don't care about this corporate drama. I just want them to be protected and be safe and be, you know, supported f and through whatever they're going through and just, you know, give back what they have lost as of now, which is five months of incredible, you know, distress. Give them back peace of mind, you know, protect them at all costs. Also because they're minors, some of them. So, girl, what are, what are we doing here? Like, for real. Um, but yeah, just, you know... Hope you guys also support the girls, and hopefully we can demand some better treatment for them, and I don't know. I don't know what way forward it, like, what we, what could we do in that sense? Like, boycotting the groups is probably going to lead to them dissolving, so I don't know if that's the ideal plan, but also if they're not happy with it and they cannot get out of the contract, maybe that's the best way, I don't know, at this point. But, yeah. Just keep an eye out on the news if you're interested in this, and keep an eye out on any new ep episodes. You know, um, we shall be slaying very soon with a new episode, uh, with a new episode next mm, next week, bitch. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, just have a.
great rest of the week and check out more episodes the related ones in my podcast you can just search for k-pop drama under my uh, episodes and you'll find previous episodes about this and follow me on social media you'll find them in the description uh, of this episode and any episode to be fair and you can find uh, songs that i've added for the week um in the playlist for august oh sorry for september what the fuck um anyways slay bye